Hello! <laughs> Welcome to the test meeting of the Greater Fredericksburg Chapter of the American Recorder Society. We're trying to see if we can make this work because recorders do not exist in isolation. Yes. <laughs> Yay, recorder. It's not recorder anymore, right? Together. <laughs> Ah! Oh. Isolation. That's right. Actually, I forgot to give Jim a recorder before he started up. I'm the conductor anyway, so I don't need one. You can just oh. wave your arms while I play. All right. <laughs> All right. So we are trying to test a number of things. How many people can we get participating? Can we get this recorded and in a format so that people can, I don't know, join along? And we're going to try a couple things. We're going to try sharing our screens to see if people can see our handouts and things of that sort. And we're going to try to play a little bit to see if it can be heard. And then maybe people can, with the YouTube video, play along with it. Clearly, we won't be able to play together like this, correct? Probably not, but we can try. <laughs> I think it'll be a disaster, but we can certainly try. All right. So we've got some screen sharing to do. The first thing I'd like to share for all of our members joining us on the recording is our website. Can everybody see our website? Mm -hmm. All right. So We've been running our little website. I think it got started at the end of November, December. And here's where I'm just going to give you a tour of our website. This is our featured post that, you know, if we have something interesting coming up or an interesting article, it will be featured here. So we're probably going to be doing another video meeting on April 5th. That would be our normal meeting time. Let's see. Um, we have our chapter news. This is just a little bit of a blurb about the previous meeting that we had. Our last meeting in March was about the Alexander Technique and the meeting before in February was about learning to transpose or learning new fingerings quickly and you can read that there. This is our area for upcoming meetings. And here is our area for articles of note. They rotate. And if you miss an article and you want to see what we've got going on, come on up to Chapter News here and you'll find all of our archived articles, everything. So notices, articles, links. This poor little girl's got the wrong hands on the recorder on the top. Why are they teaching kids to put the wrong hand on top? That's so weird. Um, our Building Your Library series is in here and all that good stuff. If you want to find out more about us, clearly we'll have to update this that we're now doing video meetings. There's the About section, which tells about us, gives you a way to contact the American Recorder Society, and tells you when we have our meetings, which will most likely be via video for a while. Our May one should be interesting when we have our party. We'll all have to come to Zoom while holding a glass of wine. <laughs> you can contact us with this little contact form. Yep, just fill it in and it'll go to our email. And you can always find us on Facebook and on Instagram. And we've got a little feed over at the side here. There's our little Instagram feed. So that's just a little tour of our website. That's probably the most public way to get a hold of us during this um, health crisis since um, not everybody does Facebook. Oh, Jim, we just lost your feed. What? We just lost your video. Oh, now you're back. I don't know why. All right, so that's my screen to share for our website. Probably our most uh, public, out in the open kind of way to get a hold of us and see what's going on. 
So I'm going to stop sharing that for a minute. So had you seen our website before, Jarrett? I actually hadn't, and I didn't know that there was an Instagram, so. <laughs> oh, so you weren't even following us on Instagram. I bet that I could fix that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the Instagram handle? Fred Recorder. Okay, perfect. Oh, oh, follow, done. Oh, uh, now we can follow you back. Excellent. You're going to see a lot of things about bassoons and cats. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right. So then the next thing I want to share on my screen, let's hope this works, is our test topic for today. So let's see if this works. Can everybody see the handout? There's a little picture of the recorder. Yes. Is that, that's going? All right, so we are going to be talking about trills as our test topic today, and that's gonna allow us, oh, I lost your video feed again, Jim. Unmute. I wanted to mute the sound because someone's mowing their lawn. Um, oh, well, you're not muted. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> I think you need a better webcam. Um, Mine, mine's probably better than, better than yours. <laughs> probably. All right. So we are looking at this um, handout here. It has our information. Here's our email, fredericksburgrecorders at gmail.com. Our website that we just got a little tour of our Facebook group, which you can join. If you belong to Facebook, you can join our group and our Instagram, Fred Recorder. So our test subject today is about trills, mid or early to mid 18th century trills. Um, most of us in our organization um, all come from a band tradition. So we've got a couple flutists, a couple clarinetists, a couple saxophonists, bassoonists, a couple brass players. I think we only have two people that show up regularly who are singers and keyboardists. So most of us have some experience with trills in the modern sense through our band literature. And when we think of trills, we are actually thinking about the shaking part, the part where we're wiggling our finger back and forth a lot. But in the mid and early 18th century, the trill was actually a combination of three different ornaments. So I've got here, the trill has a complex and ever evolving history. The trill is classified as an ornament and ornamentation is defined as a method of modifying music. The trill can occur anywhere in the piece, but for today we're going to be talking about that cadential trill. And the cadential trill was actually three ornaments crammed together. The trill begins with the appoggiatura, that's the first ornament that we wind up playing. The appoggiatura is followed by the shake, and the shake is concluded by some um, concluding structure, such as an anticipation, a neighbor tone, a nachschlag, things of that sort. So in general, I have distilled down the cadential trill to six rules. The appoggiatura, the first part of this trill, is placed on the beat, not before the beat. So as modern wind players playing in band, we see a lot of grace notes, and those grace notes tend to happen before the beat, and that's not the case for the appoggiatura. The appoggiatura is going to be on the beat. The second rule is that appoggiatura is going to be way longer than you think it should be. So, and when I'm teaching my little flute students and I'm teaching them about 18th century trills, you know, they come to me and they say, oh, I know it's supposed to start on the upper note. And then they just kind of go into this frenzy and they don't hold the appoggiatura. <laughs> um, so it doesn't sound right, even though they started on the upper note. So that appoggiatura is going to be a lot longer than you think, almost half the value of the principal note. And we'll, we'll get into that. I have another screen to share with you. Um, you're probably only going to get a couple shakes in. Um, the shake should end on the principal note, and the shake needs to be followed by some sort of resolution. 
and all three structures, appoggiatura, the actual wiggle itself, and the resolution need to happen within the time allowed for the trill. So, if you want a fancy discussion about the trills, um, I've got an excerpt here from the Rules of Musical Interpretation. This is a secondary his text that compiles primary texts from the 18th century to tell you what they were thinking and writing about with trills, but instead of, you know, buying 10 books, they've compiled all of those treatises for you. And you can find more about this book on our blog. Here's our little link. And we're going to be looking at the finger sonata that I emailed out to people earlier this week to learn about trills. So here it is. Here is our finger sonata, our first movement. And we're going to be looking at these cadential trills. A cadence, as many of you remember from uh, your high school band, <laughs> is the period at the end of the musical sentence. So if a music is, is language, and we can make a sentence out of music. The cadence is the period at the end of the sentence. And in the 18th century, they really liked a good flourish. So as you can see here, you can all see the screen, correct? As you can see here, I have drawn in the appoggiatura. So we're looking at the version for the soprano recorder. Beat one, we've got the E. C, B, and then we're about to go into the trill. So we have to start on the note above the principal note. So the principal note is an A, you see that? So we have to start and play an appoggiatura on the B. Now this invisible B that I had to write in here is going to be the thing that lands on the beat. In order to practice this, what I would do is I would play beat one, and then I would land on beat two on this second B, and it will sound like this. Let's see if I uh, freak out all the microphones. Here we go. Everybody get that? Oh, I played the wrong fingerings. I said I was doing the soprano one and I did the right, wrong one. Okay, this is the soprano one. So here's beat one. So I play that B on the downbeat. All right. Then what I'm going to be doing after I play the downbeat appoggiatura, oops, I want to un, un uh, select that. After I play that downbeat appoggiatura, I'm going to do the actual shake, the actual wiggle. And I have to stop that wiggle on the principal note, on the A. So you heard me start the appoggiatura on the B and wiggle and end on the A. This edition is kind of nice because they actually wrote out the resolution that we're going to be doing, and that is this G. This is called the anticipation. When you play the final note <laughs> right beforehand, it's the ta-da! That's called the anticipation. So we'll put those together. So we got all three of those uh, ornaments crammed into the time allotted. One more time. Ta-da. Did that articulation come out clearly where you heard the anticipation and then the final note? Yep. Great. So every time we have a cadence, we would be doing a structure or a formula like that. I have the alto version. Oh, here's the alto version. So for everybody doing alto, I'm going to grab my alto. Alto is a little bit different. And I'm going to do the same procedure. I'm going to play the first beat, and then I'm going to make sure that I have that appoggiatura, that invisible D, landing on beat two. See, 
see how I landed on beat two, not before beat two. Oh, I'm getting a sound adjustment right now. How was that sound? It still sounded fine. It still sounded fine. Yeah. Okay. Our fearless conductor came to make sure that my sound was doing all right. So are there any questions so far about this cadential trill? No. No. And of course, nobody's uh, texting in any questions. So the trill in the 18th century is not the same as the trill that we think of when we think of our high school band experience. It's not something where you just start wiggling and wiggle for, I don't know, a hundred beats <laughs> without stopping. It has three parts. It actually is three ornaments crammed together. And you're not going to spend an awful lot of time actually wiggling your fingers. All right, last thing I wanted to share was the excerpt from the book that I mentioned earlier. So here's the excerpt from the book. I like this one. He compiled all the signs for the trill, the, this little wiggle here, the T, the TR, the plus sign. So if you see any of those things, you know you're supposed to trill. And there's a nice example here where he shows you how uncomfortably long <laughs> the appoggiatura really is compared to the actual wiggling you're doing. The shakes, and here is the anticipation, the ta-da. So that is a nice graphic. I think that that's an excellent graphic because many times when we're thinking about trills, it's, oh, we need to stop, we need to stop right at the end of this note, and this really shows, no, you can go a little longer, and you give the separation, and ta-da. You can have a little space, yeah. Um, one of the things that my little flute students are told is that they must trill continuously until the next note comes up. And if they're doing that, they might be on the wrong note when the next note comes up. They might be on the upper note instead of on the principal note mm -hmm. when the trill actually comes up. And that makes it very difficult then to go on. So you can physically stop wiggling your fingers to do the anticipation. So that's a really nice graphic. I like that one. And then we move forward a little bit. Here is um, one interpretation. Chokel is trying to show what he thinks should be happening to the trilled note. This is not a cadential trill, but it's following the same rules. Here's the figure that happens beforehand. Here's the trilled note. And all we see is the principal note plus the trill sign. And here is what he thinks should be happening. He thinks that the appoggiatura should be exactly half the value of the trilled note. And then it appears that the anticipation is actually written out at the end. So um, you're going to be holding that appoggiatura longer than you think. And then we talk a little bit about the actual shake, the wiggle part of the trill, a little bit. Um, Quantz talks about being very precise with your wiggles and <laughs> not letting your fingers spaz out. But I really like the previous graphic over here, which shows how you can start the trill a little slower, get a little faster, but it's still not a spaz out. So that is and, what we've got. And this graphic here, it, it actually shows, it, it, you can group it in threes too, it, it, in a couple spots. So you can feel that it's almost a triplet in there too. And that's actually just such a great graphic just to express what you can do musically. Right, if you've never been taught that trills can be expressive, they're just these things that you have to wiggle your finger for, for a thousand beats, we flutists get that a lot, um, and you really need to feel precise getting going with your 18th century trill journey, this graphic can, I think is very helpful.
So that's what I've got on trills today. Did we want to try to play that first movement of the finger sonata? Like what, <laughs> what do we want to experiment with here? I mean, we can. If All right. Something. Okay. I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm going to use the soprano copy. Oh, well, great. I can, I'll read it on that screen. Oh, you can read it off the screen. So the sound may freak out and we may stop. <laughs> 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 we'll see what happens. Um, this is a grove. A grove is one of the slower of the um, tempo markings in the 18th century. So we're actually going to be subdividing. We are going to be counting this not in four, but in eight. So it'll be one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. I didn't realize I could write on my screen. Oh. Like if how I how much you can do. Oh, this could be severely cool. Oh wait, let's see. <gasps> yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, now how do I get rid of it? <laughs> That's such a great oh. question. Oh, there we go. I did it. All right. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, play. Okay, so this is clearly not working with us together. I don't even know what's showing up. Like, Tim, what do you hear? I hear one clear line and then I hear one that's kind of uh, going in and out, kind of. Um, so do you guys have, not. yeah, do you guys have your uh, audio settings the same? I think so. I don't know. Mm. We turned on original sound, right? Yes, but give me one second. I'm going to put earphones in. Oh, and see if that feedback. Yeah, but I'm going to have to figure out where they go. Okay, just a second with my untangling. But please keep talking. <laughs> oh, your profile picture is really cute. Who took that picture for you? Um, that was at New Jersey MEA. Um, my bassoon ensemble performed there um, a month ago. And oh, nice. I don't actually know who took that photo, but it was a great photo. Nice. Has your um, program made you go and get your uh, formal headshots and things? Um, I was going to do that, but no. <laughs> I missed my opportunity. Oh, no. So now yeah. you have to do it on your own. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jim, your video keeps phasing in and out. Can, uh, here's a question. Can you hear me, though? I yeah. can hear you just fine. Mm. Yeah, that's weird. It my Yeah, my video keeps shutting itself off automatically. I don't know how or why. That's so strange. It is strange. And I keep turning it back on, and it keeps shutting itself off. And But I, I have... Um, I don't know, I should be sharing this with everybody, but I uploaded the different, I have different drivers, so I, as soon as we're done. Well, but this is the grand experiment, yes. This is the grand experiment. This right. is not a formal meeting, it's a test. So can you hear me? I can hear you, you're much quieter than you were before. Uh, why, okay. Oh, you can actually, you can choose a virtual background as well. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. None of 
that sounded terribly good. Oh, yeah? Yikes. Okay, while well, you guys fuss with all that, I'm going to play this for our membership, and they can play along later. So this is the soprano version, and this is the grave. One, two, ready, play. of opportunities for even more trills and more ornaments in that movement. Maybe some other time. All right. Have we got audio fixed up? I think so. I mean, oh, that's better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Your, your, your recorder level on that was a lot better. It was, it was a lot. It was when you were doing it before it was a little piercing. Oh, okay. You'll hear one of the recording. Yeah, we'll, we'll hear it on the test recording. Okay. Should we try to play together and see what happens? Let's try it. Okay. One, two, here we go. Yeah, we're getting that same feedbacky, same not really working at the same time sort of thing going on. I think there's just too much of a lag to play at the same time. Yeah, and I don't think the audio works that way. So, is there anything else we need to test out? No, I think that's it um, um, that I could think of. Okay. So, all we need now is feedback from viewers at home. <laughs> right. Well, and interaction in the group chat, because uh, we can have the group chat going while you're discussing things. We can yes. have audio. All we need is people. Oh, we need that, that here is probably a good thing. Hey, uh, what are we testing? Oh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I think I can stop that now. There we go. Okay, did you see that? Did I see what? I I put that. something in the in the group chat. There's a group chat. Where is it? How do I find it? Is it in reactions? Do I type um, on that? It's right next to reaction or uh, a couple of there's like a chat screen or like You're right next to share screen. Right next to share screen. Oh, okay. Chat. <gasps> Minimize my bookmarks. What kind of recorder is that? Oh. I guess that explains why you didn't see the first one. <laughs> oh, my bookmarks were too big? No, you had you had your website open and it showed everything that you bookmark on the left side. Uh, I mean, it's all pretty tame stuff, but you know, you never know. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, let's see. I'll chat. Uh, mine is a book. I never spell it right. Okay, I never get the. All right. There we go. Beautiful. And we can send files to this. Oh, okay. So like if I, I needed to send another copy of, say, the Finger Sonata, I could do that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You probably 
Everybody probably has the finger sonata. I bet I can send a copy of... Oh, I sent that privately. Whoops. Oh, yeah, when you're typing, you have to make sure everyone or the individual you're sending it to. What? Okay. Recording All right. Works. Okay. Beautiful. What a pink recorder. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I just found it. Ah, oh, come on, really? Okay, I hate this camera. No idea what's going on here. Okay. Windows 10 or... Mm. Yeah. Oh, we all need pink recorders. <laughs> <laughs> I have to open my file. <gasps> oh my gosh, I totally need this pink recorder. Yes. That is too cute. Okay. All right. That's all I got. That's all she wrote. Well, thank you for the lesson on trills. I'm sure that we are all going to appreciate it at some point in time, now more than others, because we all have time to practice. <laughs> oh, yes. We all have time to practice. All right. So for those of you watching on YouTube later, let us know. Let us know what we can do better or whatever. Let okay. us know what kind of recorder you have. That's right. Yay. <laughs> Woo. All right. Goodbye. I'm going to leave the meeting now. So long. Farewell. Elvita saying goodbye. <laughs>